welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope you guys are having a great Thanksgiving. Um, I know I am. I'm looking forward to the food. So, before I get in my updates, um, if you're not interested in hearing any of my updates, I've put a timestamp right here. Um, you can shuttle forward and you can hear my story. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on what I should talk about, let me know. Put them in the comments below. I'm very interested in hearing them and I will respond back to you if you do write to me. Pretty cool. So, on to the updates. Um, first of all, my haircut. I like it. It's pretty short. Um, I had to get it cut because my hair was so damaged below, so I got it pretty short. I call it the Clara Oswald haircut. If you're a big fan of Doctor Who, you know who I'm talking about. Um, I didn't really plan it this way. It just so happened, and I like it. And if you guys like it, let me know. I'm, I'm considering it. Second thing. I'm going to the American Meteorology Society's annual conference! Yay! So I um, applied for a travel grant with my school. And we're going to go, we're going to present a poster, and I look forward to seeing you all. I'm going to do some vlogging and blogging while there, and I'll share you my trip with you. It should be a lot of fun. Number three, I got really good feedback from everybody. Thank you so much for those emails and those kind words. And, I really appreciate that. Um, keep the feedback coming. I'm very, very welcome and open to it. And yeah, comment and let me know what you think. All right, story time. Um, <laughs> this is something that on Thanksgiving I am probably the most thankful for. I'm very thankful for my family, my friends, all of you watching this, um, my dogs, and again, that turkey that I just ate. But, um, I'm very, very thankful for this one thing that relates to meteorology. That is very, very, very dangerous. Um, I am very sensitive to mold, and we did have a bit of mold exposure in my house. Um, this is the third place we've had to deal with it. Not because I'm just looking for mold, it's just that the first two places were affected by flooding and leakage, and it wasn't properly handled, and I dealed it with those apartment communities. This last one wasn't their fault. Um, we have contaminated carpet. It's very scary. So how I found out about this um, is I about two years ago lived in an apartment where we had really bad flooding in our garage um, and we tried to get the apartment community to take care of it. They didn't. So about a few months later after this initial flooding, I started having anaphylactic shock. I went to the hospital twice. I got hooked up with an EpiPen, um, breathing treatments and all kinds of things, and I worked with my doctors and we discovered I'm very highly sensitive to mold. And it's a very scary thing. Um, not being able to breathe, you can't see it. You can smell it sometimes if there's a lot of mold. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's active or not. I'm allergic and sensitive to the body of the mold itself. So if it's not alive or it's not kicking, I'm still allergic to it. It's still there. And it's pretty scary. Um, so I had a Greek team of doctors who worked with me and we got myself out of the apartment. Had another problem with another apartment, moved out, and we're here and we're pretty happy with it. Um, my allergist gave me a uh, air quality specials in air quality specialists information just in case I um, had problems with it again and turns out I did um, we were sitting in my apartment and all of a sudden my nose would start dripping my eyes would start watering um, I couldn't breathe I had really hard problems with it and I had to go to my allergist and they put me on allergy medication and it seemed to help but then it kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and we looked for structural damage, we looked, you know, everywhere, we cleaned all the time and the things that used to work, worked, didn't work at all and it was really scary. So I called this air quality specialist and he came and he did an air quality study and brought a big machine that scans all of the air in your room, it has a detachable wand, you can sit and scrub the floor and it takes sample from the floor. He scrubbed my dogs, and come to find out, he came back 30 minutes later, 
and said, I know exactly what your problem is. Your carpet is completely contaminated with mold. So scary. For perspective, yes, there are mold spores everywhere. I'm not dying when I go outside. It takes a lot to make me choke up. Um, and just for a frame of reference, according to this air quality specialist report, 16,000 mold spores exist outside alone. In my house, 2 million spores just in the carpet. That's a lot. You have the whole world around you that has 16,000 spores. It doesn't affect me. And then in one room is 2 million spores. Now, um, some people will say, well, you know, there's just mold everywhere, so we don't really do mold testing. Two million spores, it's up into the unhealthy level. At some point, you have to be accountable for it. So, long story short, I asked the mold expert what he recommended. I got some mold killing spray, and then we also got a really amazing vacuum. Apparently, there's only two vacuums out there that are actually true HEPA filters. We had a HEPA filter vacuum, but it just kept kicking things out and it made it so much worse. Because now instead of in the carpet, it's in the carpet, it's in the air, it's on the furniture, you have to dust everything and it's really hard to breathe. So there are two different kinds of vacuum cleaners that you are acceptable. I'll put the names of them below in the comment section. Um, so you can take a look and see what kind of things if you are, think you're having problems with allergies just like me. Um, so how does this all relate to meteorology and how do we finally take care of it? So we got the mold killer spray, we got the um, vacuum and that seemed to do okay with us. The only thing with mold killer spray is it's a salt that we used um, and the salt like took a lot of the humidity out of the air so it got really dry so we had to do like nose nasal spray and stuff like that. Um, but we also had a carpet cleaning company come in with the apartment complex um, they just let us have their carpet cleaning people for the day and that was pretty nice and we just cleaned everything and it seems to be a lot better. Um, I don't have any breathing problems anymore and I can breathe and I can go on to my daily life. So woohoo! So how does this all deal with meteorology? Believe it or not, it's actually a meteorology problem. Um, the air quality specialist that came in PhD in meteorology. <laughs> um, and why do you say, why does a meteorologist, um, why did they even know about air quality? That seems weird. Well, so as a meteorologist, you don't just study weather and how it's created. You have to study every particle that is in the air. And that's from the floor to in your surface all the way out to space. We study the entire atmosphere and how it interacts with each other and how it creates weather ultimately, but also we need to know what the temperature down here is, what the temperature up at, you know, 11 kilometers in the air is. We need to know all of that to keep pilots and people informed on air quality. Believe it or not, if it's hotter in the atmosphere, up higher than the surface, and down below at the surface is cooler, you're actually going to have kind of like a lid on the top of that surface that's higher and that air is going to float up and it's going to stay at the cap and then it's going to get pushed back down. So that's actually how we get a lot of pollutants in the air is it's just hotter at the higher levels of the atmosphere and it just keeps everything in and kind of circulates it. So we know about what's going on in the air and it was really cool because I told this guy that came to do our air quality study that I'm a meteorology student too and we geeked out and I looked at his equipment and pretty legit and that's a lot of fun. I'm really really thankful for it and it's actually kind of cool and I might consider air quality someday. Here's some advice on what you can do if you think you're having problems with air um, quality as well as mold problems. I'm not an expert. I'm not going to say that you do have it. You might not and you might have asthma or breathing problems. It's worth checking out. So the very first thing you need to do, I would suggest, is go to the doctor. I'm not an expert in this. I can't tell you how to treat you. I can only tell you the things that are really helpful to me. And I'm not saying that, you know, this is definitely all the symptoms and you definitely have mold exposure. I'm saying that this is what I experienced and here's what I think can help you. So number one, go to a doctor. 
the doctor most likely will recommend you go to an allergist. The allergists are actually responsible for not only best, uh, just allergic to animals, environment, stuff like that. They are also very um, into doing breathing problems and one of the things they did to me is they had me do two tests on my breathing. Um, they also do allergy testing and stuff like that to nail down what is it that's making your throat close up. Um, it's very important for you to know. Second thing, once you've gone to go visit the doctor, I really highly recommend you grab a buddy. Um, because while you're remediating this thing and while you're going through it and while you're trying to figure things out and what's right for you, you're going to need a friend to help you who's not allergic to it. Um, my husband isn't and I'm really thankful for him because he took care of everything for me. Um, there are a lot of times where I'm just so exhausted because I'm using all my energy to breathe where I can't do stuff and so he is really really helpful and all of that. And I really recommend someone to help you clean and help you get things done. And don't feel guilty if you can't do it because it's really unhealthy. There's some times where I just, I want to go help him. <laughs> I really do. And I can't because within a minute of being in there, I can't breathe and it just gets to be really hard. Um, don't be afraid to also call emergency services and also go to the ER if you're having any of these problems. You're going to need a lot of help to get through this because it's very scary and it can be very deadly. The third thing you want to do is if you suspect there's mold in your house, A, first take care of yourself, but the third thing you need to do is get some testing done. One of the things I did, and it's the best thing for you to do, is to get something where you can see it. And so the first home I was in where I had these problems, we just went to Home Depot and they get they have these mold tests where it's just a petri dish, you know, you get from biology class in high school or whatever, you can buy a petri dish there. You put the stuff in, you leave it open for an hour, you close it, and you seal it up. And then within, let's see, 48 hours it should develop. We had one that developed within two days. It was really scary, um, but it's really helpful to be able to go, there's mold here. The other thing you want to do is you want to buy two of them. Um, if you have two of them, they will, um, you put one in your house and you put one outside because you don't know if maybe it's just the same stuff that's coming outside. We had two, we had one in our house, one in, uh, one in our house immediately developed, the other one was clean. So there's that for you. Um, the thing I had to do is we did a mold test, we did a petri dish test as well, um, but we still couldn't find anything because they're so small and particulate and it wasn't floating around in the air and it was in our carpet. I would very highly recommend a um, air quality specialist or a mold remediation company to come in and do testing for you. And make sure they know their stuff. Make sure that they're very well educated because some are just um, educated in building problems like it behind the wall and still some of them they don't understand how it can cause allergies and how it could affect you. So. I would get somebody very knowledgeable. I highly recommend my guy. He had a PhD in atmospheric science. He knew a lot of stuff about it. So it was very good. But get someone that's very knowledgeable and they'll be able to tell you. Get a report so you can see exactly what's going on. And so, yeah, I highly recommend a report. Yeah, it's on later today. I'm so getting that food. Blah, 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 blah. And I want to get into something that is meteorologically related that could kill you. All right. There's a viewfinder over here, by the way. If you wonder why I'm there. I know it sounds like such a TV tease, doesn't it? What things can kill you in your kitchen? Well, I'll let you know.